thing I love it and I always add it it adds a beautiful aroma to the syrup and this is the syrup that we are going to brush on top of the final baked uh, babka so I'm just giving it a little stir and I'm gonna put it on the stove I'm gonna bring it to a boil and I'm gonna simmer it and let it reduce till I can uh, feel that it's a little bit sticky and it usually takes about half an hour. So as I said, when we make a babka, either you make a few things in advance, a day in advance at least, or on the day of making the babka, you do everything with the end in mind. So when I say the end in mind, I mean what we just did. We place the syrup on the stove, it's starting to cook, and now I'm gonna make the filling for the babka so that we can refrigerate it while we're working on the dough. So I have here one cup of cinnamon, then I'm adding one cup of sugar, and to this I have here two sticks of butter, which I'm going to add very, very slowly. So we'll start by mixing the sugar a little bit, just slowly mixing the sugar. And as the sugar starts to mix, I am adding the butter, which as you can see, I cut into small squares. Just add the butter gradually as you go. It's better to have the butter in room temperature. The softer the butter, the faster this process will be. I'm gonna keep adding the butter and I will meet you back here in a few minutes. Stay with me. Now I'm going to increase the speed so it will help soften the butter even more and it will eventually make it more of a paste, a cinnamon paste if you will, and that's what we want. I let it mix for about two minutes, not more than that. You know, if here is a suggestion, if you want the filling to be ready for today's baking, all you do is put it in a freezer for at least an hour. 
Uh, the filling and the dough both have to be at a temperature of about 40 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, I would say, a refrigerator temperature. You want it to be a spread, but you don't want it to be uh, too soft. Too soft is not going to work for us, and when we start the braiding and folding, you will see why. So all we're doing now, I've got here a Ziploc bag and a marker, and all I'm doing now, I want to label it so that I know this one is a cinnamon filling, okay, and I'm going to open it. And all I'm doing now, I am stuffing the cinnamon filling into a Ziploc bag. And Ziploc bag is actually very good. And when you see the Ziploc bag that I already prepared yesterday for us, um, you will understand why. It's much easier to grab from a cooled down a Ziploc bag paste than anything else, and I'll show you. It's important that you seal it. You don't want this to get freezer burn. And this is how it looks. A Ziploc labeled, and now I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator because I already have one that I made yesterday so we can have something ready to go. And we are ready to work on the babka dough. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add three quarters of warm water, just warm, not hot, and I have one tablespoon of yeast, and we're gonna give it a little mix. Now I'm ready to add the sugar. I added the sugar, and I'm gonna let it sit for a few minutes. Four or five minutes would be great. I think our yeast mixture is ready for us, and we are starting to add the other things. I'm gonna add my four eggs first, as a good rule of thumb, it's always good to add liquids to liquids and dry ingredients to dry ingredients. And we're gonna start adding the butter. The butter is very soft because I left it in room temperature, so it's really soft. So we're gonna add it one at a time. The last things we have is our four cups of flour and a half teaspoon salt. I'm gonna wait with the salt. The salt intend to interrupt with the development of gluten. So we're gonna keep it till the end. So gradually I'm gonna start adding the flour. The babka dough loves kneading, so let it knead for a while. I usually let it knead for about eight minutes at least. So our mixer has been kneading the dough for at least two minutes now. The dough is starting to form and this is the time where I add my salt. If you see that your dough needs a little bit more flour, it's okay, just add a little bit more flour. Beautiful, I can tell our dough is ready. And all I'm doing now, I've got here a large Ziploc, which I already labeled. And I have to label it because I have other kinds of dough in my refrigerator. And all I'm doing now, I'm gonna put my dough in the Ziploc and I'm gonna let it rest in the refrigerator until it gets to a temperature of about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's gonna go in my refrigerator for the minimum of four hours or even overnight. And I'll be right back, stay with me. So I've got our dough that I prepared yesterday. You can see that I floured the bowl before I stored the dough in the refrigerator, which is good. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I have to divide our dough to four equal parts because we're gonna get four loaves of babka from this amount. And you know, it's okay if it's not exactly the same size, then you're gonna have one large babka, one medium babka, you know, if, if you can weigh them, it's even better. And it's about 10 ounces for each one, which is good. I'm gonna leave just one piece of dough. 
here and I'm gonna put the rest back in my refrigerator and I'm gonna cover them a little bit just like that the reason for that we have to maintain a specific temperature of 40 degrees 30 to 40 degrees for the dough and the same for the filling so I've got here the fillings that I prepared yesterday and there's my dough but this is going back in the fridge so that I can take out one at a time when I make it. In this way, I will maintain a cold temperature for this dough. And it's important because of the foldings. And I'll explain in a minute when you see what we're going to do. So I'm gonna add a little bit flour right here and I'm gonna roll the dough. I'm gonna make kind of a rectangle to begin with, okay? Just stretch it, and remember, your dough at this point is really cold. Uh, if it starts getting warm, you're gonna see it a little bit sticky. Okay, so I'm gonna sprinkle a little flour on my rolling pin, and that's it. I created my rectangle, and to this, I am taking a large spoon and I'm gonna start adding my filling. I'm gonna create kind of a nice train of filling right in the center. And as you can see, my Ziploc is at the right temperature. It's a little spreadable, not very much, and that's okay. If it's too spreadable, it's also not good for us. So it's a little bit tricky. Okay, so all I'm doing now, I am adding the cinnamon filling or the chocolate filling, whatever you chose, to the dough. And you have to work fast, uh, to be honest, because you don't want the dough to get warm. It's gonna be really hard if the dough is warm and you need, you need to do all the folding. So try to work fast if you can to make sure to maintain the cold temperature of the dough. It's gonna make it so much easier for you when you start folding so that you can create the layers. Now, it, babka can be very easy, just made with, um, you know, just roll it like a roulette. And that will give you some layers too. But me and my wanting to challenge myself even more, I wanted it to look like a braid, but I also wanted to have the layers. And that's how I came up with this solution. Okay, and? Continue, continue, create the layer, and here we go. Remember, the amount of filling we did, um, the chocolate or the cinnamon, is enough for four uh, babkas. So if you're making two chocolates and two cinnamons, what I'm doing now is it's, uh, you know, you're still, you, you're gonna have some extra, which is great. So all the extra can go either in the refrigerator or in the freezer if you are planning to keep it there for a while before you make it again, okay? I think we're good and it's okay to leave a little bit empty area here because um, this is the area that's probably going to be folded, tucked underneath when, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Very good. So this is our train of cinnamon filling and we're gonna start uh, with the folding. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fold this side. Okay, and then I'm gonna fold the other side. And on this, I'm gonna give it a little roll, just roll, and as I roll, gently start stretching the dough as well and the rolling will help you level the amount of the filling that you have there. 
The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sprinkle very, very thin layer of flour. And on this, I'm gonna take this end and I'm gonna fold it up here. Now, you're gonna see that sometimes it does this, where the filling wants to leak out. Immediately, all I do is I cover it with a little bit of flour. The flour will block the filling from coming out <clears throat> so that we can still create uh, layers. And all I'm doing now, <clears throat> I'm stretching it again, stretching it again. You can see my roller is clean. The filling did not leak to my roller. Okay, and now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna fold one last time. One last time and I'm gonna add flour to make sure that no filling is trying to escape and I'm gonna stretch it again. Stretch again just a few times and then turn it to the other side and again I see a little filling trying to escape. I'm gonna put a little bit flour on top of it and this will block the filling from coming out and all I'm doing now I am stretching it for the last time that's it and now I am ready to use my knife so there's my knife you need a very good sharp knife and all we are doing we are making cuts all the way to the bottom right like that see here we go I have here three beautiful long pieces of dough and then go through with the knife to make sure that you did separate the three and all I'm doing now I am going to cut each one of these long pieces of dough right in the center right in the center okay here we go make sure that if the dough is sticky add a little flour to it and always go through the cut that you made with your sharp knife to make sure that it's cut all the way just like that and here's what I'm doing now I'm gonna put this one right on top of the second one and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it right on top of its neighbor and then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it right on the last piece so now you have three pieces each one is doubled and we are ready to braid it so I'm gonna take the very very last ends and I'm gonna pinch them I'm gonna pinch them to make sure that they are glued together. Nobody is going to see this because it's gonna be tucked in inside our baking dish. So there's my baking dish. And now I'm starting just a regular braiding. Gently pour this one, fold it and put it here. Then take the one on the left and bring it to the center and always make sure that they are sticking together, the two pieces. Then take this and bring it to the center and do the same with this one, and do the same with this one. You're just making a regular, beautiful, beautiful braid. And look at our babka. We created a beautiful layered, cinnamon layered babka and then again I'm taking the ends and I'm gonna put them together pinching them to stick them together and then I'm gonna open the end that I pinched first that I pinched first so that I can continue the braid on this side and now that my braid is complete I can pinch again pinch and pinch and my braid is secure and I'm gonna lift it up and bring it closer so that you can see the beautiful babka 
that we created. As I said, you're not a, we are not pros, but we can make it like a pro. Now, I am taking this ugly end and I'm gonna tuck it in, my friends. And I'm gonna do the same with this side. I'm gonna tuck it in and I'm gonna lay it here and I want you to see how beautiful our babka looks right before it goes to the oven and before the egg brushing. So I finished my last babka and you can see I made it in a much wider dish just because I didn't have one of these English cakes uh, dishes. So the last thing I'm doing now, I am brushing our babkas. It's gonna give them a beautiful shiny color and then I'm gonna cover it and I'm gonna let them sit for about half an hour so that they can rise a little bit more and we're gonna bake them for about an hour. And I can't wait to try it so I will meet you back right here when our babkas are baked and smell so good Stay with me so that you can see the beautiful things that's gonna come out from the oven. Our babkas came out of the oven, as you can see. Aren't they beautiful? They're so pretty, each one of them. And you can see that one of my baking pans, I didn't have another long, narrow one, and I baked it here, and what happened, instead of rising, it expanded and I did it with four pieces braiding and it helped expanding and bake it really nice. The last thing we're doing now is just brushing the babka with the syrup that I prepared. Just a nice, light, sweet syrup, very light. It adds so much to it and it looks so beautiful and shiny. Babka can be frozen, uh, they freeze beautiful, so if you're making too many, you can either store it in a refrigerator or you can put it in the freezer. Oh wow, for up to one month. The aroma of the cinnamon is all over my kitchen. I wish I could pass on to you the beautiful, delicious aroma that I am smelling right now. They baked beautiful for one hour at 300 Fahrenheit in the oven. If you have extra of the syrup, you can always store it in uh, a container. Let it cool, put it in a container and store it in your refrigerator. It can also go in the freezer. The orange blossom is an option. Uh, it, but it's a great optional uh, addition. The uh, aroma of the orange blossom water is so good. And you can find it, you can find it anywhere. Uh, any Mediterranean store, any Middle East market will have for you orange blossom water, which you can add to so many different bakings. That's it, my friend. I'm gonna lift up one of our babkas so that you can see how they came out. Bon appetit for everyone. And this is also the time to say thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me in today's video. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribe so that you can enjoy all these delicious Mediterranean dishes. Subscribe and like and share with your circle. Bon appetit from my kitchen to yours.